Hi, I'm Fee and this is my renovation project. Since the day we got the keys, we've been turning this house into our forever home. I'm an interior designer by the way, I run an interior design and renovation company with my partner Neil. And we specialise in helping first time renovators to create their dream homes. We're all about helping you make sensible choices with your renovation so that it doesn't go over budget or hit any roadblocks along the way. Subscribe to my channel for interior design advice, stories and tips for creating a home you love. So often when I start working with people who are about to purchase or get started on a renovation project, it can be really hard for them to know whether they're doing the right level of planning. And what I found is that it can be really helpful for them to see how an actual project runs, which gives them some insight at least into the order of events to do work in. So for this video, I want to take you behind the scenes on an actual project we've just completed. It's our own home office renovation. And I wanna show you the exact steps it took to get it from this to this. This tiny room in our three bed house is a typical box room. It's the kind of room that estate agents call a third bedroom, but we all know that that's really not practical. It served us as our home office over the years while we've prioritized other areas of the house renovation, but just look how uninspiring it was. It's tiny, squashed, really impractical furniture choices that just wasn't optimizing space at all. We had this gigantic radiator, awful curtain situation, hideous orange carpet. We cleaned it up a tad with a lick of paint and a sand of the floors, but still this office space gave us minimal storage. There was regularly camera equipment and interior design samples scattered everywhere. And honestly, the room just made us feel so gray. It wasn't a place that we felt inspired to work and design. And really interior design has such an important role in enhancing your mood. There was lots of potential for the space to become our dream office, so we started in the same way I start all client projects, and that's with a very detailed plan. Lots of people get surprised when I tell them that we tackle our own renovation projects with the same approach that we show our students in our online courses, but the approach always helps us to work in a very systematic way that avoids mistakes and prevents any possibility of expensive rework. So I created this full home design pack, working with Neil to form a detailed list of our requirements, um, which established a vision for the room and then translated that into defining a colour scheme, a furniture layout and a storage plan. Like we always say to students, if you work hard to ask the right questions and then decide every detail before any work starts, you're going to give yourself such a huge head start in reducing the stress when the builders do come knocking. So using our tried and tested home design pack approach and some visualisation techniques, I knew exactly what the room was going to look like and how much it was all going to cost even before we'd started any of the work. So we got the room to the first fixed stage, upgrading all the electrics, installing adjustable recessed ceiling lights. These ones are actually from Neptune and are a really popular choice in professional projects, so I was keen to give them a try and we made some practical changes to the socket and switch locations before the room was freshly skimmed by our plasterer. So here's a tip for you, aim to have your electrics and plumbing plans all finalised before any plastering work happens. This is so important because you don't want to be disrupting that beautiful plaster work once it's all finished. You can never patch up plaster and get a result that you're happy with, and also you don't want to be paying extra to re-skim a wall. If you're concerned that you're not going to be doing things in the correct order, then check out my free email series, which I've linked in the description box below. Once the plastering was all done, we got to work on the painting. Our favourite part of a renovation has to be the miscoating. It's when you seal the plaster work with watered down paint. And really, you can just throw it on and not worry about any cutting in, and it instantly makes the room feel like a room rather than a building site. Then of course a few days later we let the mist coat all dry and got to work on the paint colours. Now this is the first point where my home design pack came into its own. All the design decisions had been made and documented up front. I knew exactly which colour was going on the walls, I knew exactly which colour was going on the ceiling, the woodwork and the door and I could literally hand the design pack over to a team if we wanted to and there'd be minimal questions asked from them. 
Remove any last minute indecisions. You don't want to stress yourself out when you're on a deadline, nor do you want to lose the confidence in your vision. And when you do all of the design work up front, this is exactly how professional projects run and it removes the stress. It guarantees a less stressful and successful project. We really wanted to keep this room light, inspiring and fresh, so we painted the walls this beautiful neutral colour called Schoolhouse White by Farrow and Ball. And thankfully we got all the painting finished in time for the flooring to be laid. It's not essential to paint before flooring goes down, but we tried to get it done to avoid any clumsy spillages. There was actually one time where I was painting my mum's kitchen and stood straight down on top of a paint lid and then walked around the room. <laughs> so I've definitely learned my lesson now not to do that. Covering the original floorboards goes against what I normally advise. I normally say bring out all the period details that you can in your home and really let them shine, but we were working with soft pine wood which we'd lived with for a few years and it became really impractical. It marked easily with the casters of our office chairs. And really we were just ready for a more practical floor that we didn't have to worry about splitting every time we wheeled in and out of our office chairs. So we laid a laminate floor by Quickstep, who we've worked with in the past on previous blog posts and client projects. And we actually have Quickstep floors throughout our downstairs of our property. It's really quick to lay, it's tough as old boots, and it's really minimal maintenance, which is exactly why it's perfect for us. So in terms of design, we went with this classic oak beige by Quickstep. It's a laminate floor that looks deceptively close to real wood and has a really natural and shine-free finish, quite matte. Um, and having a wide plank like this with a subtle V-groove in a lighter wash was the right option for our room. It just makes it feel much bigger. I always prefer the V-groove going along every edge as it gives a floor a really nice feeling of depth. So moving on to the main feature of the design, the bespoke home office cabinetry. I designed this floor to ceiling desk space to be the main focal point in the room and to give us enormous amounts of storage and desk space to keep us organised and collaborative. It wasn't as straightforward as it looked to design. I wanted a wall to ceiling unit that stretched across this whole wall, which needed to factor in a cutout around our radiator near the window to keep access to the, to the radiator valves and we still had to be able to open up the shutters. So it was a challenge, but it was honestly such a dream come true designing this joinery to store everything that Neil and I need in our office. It's such a feeling of freedom being able to customise everything. I totally geek out at this level of detail. Visualising ideas is something a lot of people can really struggle with, but it's an essential skill when you're designing spaces. I've adopted some specific techniques over the years that I practice and share with students, but it also helps to have a great team around you that can challenge your thinking and make it all come to life. We actually drove up to the studio where our carpenter builds kitchens and office furniture to see it being built for the first time. And it was definitely love at first sight. I couldn't believe how big it looked in real life. Um, yeah, there were definitely some concerns about fitting it through the door and up the stairs and into our tiny office, but it was thankfully built in parts so we could transport it easier and then slot it all into place. I, um, I actually decided to stay out of the house and leave Neil and the lads to it on the day it arrived, um, and thankfully it all slotted in perfectly. Then it was on to the mammoth task of painting the cabinetry. And when you're renovating, there's always the question of, should you hire someone in to do the work? And when it comes to knowing what to hire people in for and what to DIY, we always ask ourselves a series of specific questions. Firstly, can we do it as good, if not close to how a professional would do it? Um, do we have the time to do it or will we be holding up progress on the build? And thirdly, do we have the budget to outsource it? And in this instance, we just finished up loads of work online for the business and spent weeks in our temporary home office looking at screens. So Neil was really eager to do some manual work and was up for the challenge.
If you have an eagle eye, you may have spotted that we chose to change the direction of the swing of the door, and this was to improve the sense of flow and give the feeling of more space in such a small room. I was really keen to bring some separation between our home life and work life with the design of this room and also to make it feel more playful and experimental when we came to work here, whilst also remaining cohesive to the rest of the house. So I came up with this idea to paint the office door and nod to our yellow logo so that it felt like we were stepping into a completely separate zone of our house. Um, and after a lot of paint samples, I landed on Freets by Valspar, which is this muted but still quite classy and playful yellow that's really brought such a sense of personality to the space. And here we are, here's the result. We are so pleased with how this room has turned out. It's now an elegant, organised, professional looking space. And every time we come in to work here, it's such a joy to sit down at the desks and have everything we need around us. And this is what I love most about interior design is how it has the ability to enhance how you experience life. But it has to start from the right place. It has to start from understanding who you are and what your needs are for the space. It's really important as a renovator for you to work on establishing a clear vision from the start so that you can hold on to that throughout the whole project. And we've definitely made mistakes in the past and we've had to learn the hard way, but you don't have to. If you want to start learning the best way to run your projects, then check out our online courses and definitely sign up to our free renovation email series. I've popped a link below and this will really kickstart your learning. Stay tuned because our next video, I want to give you a full home office tour. I want to show you how we use this space now and give you some handy tips on hiding pesky cables. So if you sign up to my free guide, links in the description, I'll email you when this next video goes live and you won't miss it. I really hope that you found this video helpful and thank you so much for watching and good luck with your renovation planning.